And just now, when I was walking up those stairs, a fly flew in my mouth and I ate it. Well, actually, insects are a dietary staple in many cultures. They're almost pure protein. Oh, son of a bitch! So, my dear friends, welcome back to English Fluency Mission YouTube channel. I am Ria, and I am your English Fluency Coach. Today, we are going to learn important daily use vocabulary with their correct pronunciation and few structures like the use of would and would rather through an American TV show, Big Bang Theory. So, what are we waiting for? Let's jump into the topic. And just now, when I was walking up those stairs, a fly flew in my mouth and I ate it. Well, actually, insects are a dietary staple in many cultures. They're almost pure protein. Oh, son of a bitch! I believe the condensation on your frozen foods weakened the structural integrity of the bag. <laughs> but returning to your key conundrum, perhaps you should call a locksmith and have him open the door for you. I did. He said he'll get here when he gets here. And you're frustrated because he phrased his reply in the form of a meaningless tautology? No! I am frustrated because I am a failure at everything and my breath smells like flies! Would you prefer to wait in our apartment? No, Sheldon, I'd rather sit on this freezing cold floor sobbing like a three-year-old. All right, then. For God's sake. Before going further, I would like to make one request. If you have not subscribed to our channel or visiting for the first time, please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for all upcoming video notifications. And just now when I was walking up those stairs, a fly flew in my mouth and I ate it. Well, actually, insects are a dietary staple in many cultures. They're almost pure protein. Oh, son an insect is a small animal that has six legs. Most insects have wings. Ants, flies, butterflies, and beetles are all insects. For example, I've got some sort of insect bite on my leg. Well, actually, insects are a dietary staple in many cultures. They're almost pure protein. Dietary staple means the main or basic food. For example, in South India, rice is a dietary staple. Next, I don't have a dietary staple. I can eat anything available. I believe the condensation on your frozen foods weaken the structural integrity of the bag. Condensation as a noun means the drops of water that appear on cold windows or other surfaces. For example, we get a lot of condensation on the walls in the winter. Next, Condensation appears on the packets of frozen food. I believe the condensation on your frozen foods weaken the structural integrity of the bag. Before we learn about structural integrity, we need to know the meaning of both words separately. Integrity as a noun means wholeness and unity. For example, separatist movements are a threat to the integrity of the nation. This means the unity of the nation is under threat because of separatist movements. And structural as an adjective means how parts of a system or object are arranged. So, the structural integrity of the bag means the way it was united and built. And drops of water on the frozen food weaken the unity and built quality of the bag. But returning to your key conundrum, Perhaps you should call a locksmith and have him open the door for you. I did. He said he'll get here when he gets here. Conundrum as a noun means a problem that is difficult to deal with or anything that puzzles. For example, arranging childcare over the school holidays can be a real conundrum for working parents. Next, he is facing a conundrum to find a job without having experience. But returning to your key conundrum, perhaps you should call a locksmith and have him open the door for you. I did. He said he'll get here when he gets here. Perhaps as an adverb is used to express uncertainty or possibility. For example, perhaps I should have been frank with him. Next, 
Perhaps, the most important question has not been asked. Locksmith as a noun means, a person, who repairs or makes locks and supplies keys. For example, I lost my flat keys and now looking for a locksmith. But returning to your key conundrum, perhaps you should call a locksmith and have him open the door for you. I did! He said he'll get here when he gets here. A structure like have him open is used, when we want something to be done for us, by someone else, then we use have or make in this manner. Have him do, or make him do. For example, don't make me wait. Next, mom, could you please make me do my homework, or could you please have me do my homework? This means, I want my mom to do my homework instead of me. We can use any one of these have or make. Here the important thing to remember is, when a person is important, then the main verb will come in the base form as do, eat, work, repair, etc. And when work is primary, and the person may be anyone, then verb third or past participle form will be used. For example, I have my mobile repaired from a local repairing shop. Or we can also use get instead of have. I get my mobile repaired from a local repairing shop. Here you noticed that we used repaired, which is the past participle form of the verb repair. And you're frustrated because he phrased his reply in the form of a meaningless tautology? No. Frustrated as an adjective means feeling annoyed, disappointed, or less confident because you cannot achieve what you want. For example, are you feeling frustrated in your present job? Next. Frustrated writers often end up in publishing. And you're frustrated because he phrased his reply in the form of a meaningless tautology? No. As a noun, tautology means the use of two words or phrases that express the same meaning in a way that is unnecessary. For example, try to avoid repetition or tautology. Next, don't do nothing. This is the tautology as negative sense is used twice that is not necessary. Rather it could be said, don't do anything, or do nothing. But in American English, lots of people speak in this manner, but grammatically it is incorrect. No. I am frustrated because I am a failure at everything and my breath smells like flies! <laughs> Would you prefer to wait in our apartment? No, Sheldon, I'd rather sit on this freezing cold floor sobbing like a three-year-old. Would is used instead of will in different senses and situations. But here it is used just for showing politeness. Sheldon could also say, will you prefer to wait in our apartment, but that could be a little rude. So, to be polite, he said, would you prefer to wait in our apartment? For example, would you like to take coffee or tea? Would you tell me the way to Connaught Place, Delhi? So, whenever we want to be polite for asking about a future event, better to use would instead of will. Would rather is used to indicate what one wants or prefers to do, or have, etc. For example, she would rather drive than take the train. Next, I'd rather stay at home than go out tonight. This means, I don't want to go outside at night, so I am choosing to stay at home. Here, I'd is the short form of saying I would, and in the description below, I have attached a PDF file that has all possible short forms used in spoken English. You can download that free of cost. Simply when we have two options to choose from, and we want to choose one, then we can use would rather in the manner I explained in the above examples. Would you prefer to wait in our apartment? No, Sheldon, I'd rather sit on this freezing cold floor sobbing like a three-year-old. Sob as a verb means to cry noisily, taking in deep breaths, as children do always when their demands are not fulfilled. For example, I found her sobbing in the bedroom because she had broken her favorite doll. Next, I could hear her sobbing. Sobbing is the present participle form of the verb sob, and sobbed is the past, and past participle form. All right then. <laughs> For God's sake.